First, have you pre-ordered your copy of my new book, Muscle for Life, yet and entered my giveaway of over $12,500 of splendid fitness swag? What? Why the devil not? Do you hate fun? Well, look, if it pleases your grace, go to muscleforlifebook.com, musclefolifebook.com now, and pre-order a copy of the book and enter the giveaway. Let's remedy this scandalous state of affairs. And I would counsel haste as well, because my big book launch bonanza ends in a couple of weeks, and then the winners will be chosen. So anyways, let's shift gears quickly and talk about tracking body weight, which is more fiddly than people realize. Because one of the easiest ways to drive yourself to distraction in your fitness journey is to obsess over daily shifts in your weight, which often have nothing to do with gaining or losing fat or muscle. So for example, even slight swings in fluid retention, glycogen levels, that's a form of carbohydrate stored in your muscles, primarily in your liver as well, and bowel movements can produce pretty noticeable ups and downs in your body weight. And so a much better way to measure and to track body weight is to look at longer range averages. Those are less erratic and those better register the stuff that we actually care about, which is fat and muscle. Now, if over the course of weeks and months, the averages are moving down, then you are clearly losing weight. If they are moving up, you are clearly gaining weight. And so here's a simple procedure. Weigh yourself every one to three days, first thing in the morning, naked, after the bathroom, and before eating or drinking anything, and then record those numbers somewhere accessible like an Excel file or a Google Sheet or the Notepad app in your phone. And if you want to take it even further, some people like to graph the numbers in a spreadsheet. And then every couple of weeks, every 10 to 14 days, add your weigh-ins together and then divide the sum by the number of weigh-ins to get your average daily weight for that period, and then record that as well. And so here's how this might look for somebody who's cutting. Let's say on Monday, they weigh 163 pounds on Thursday, 164 on Sunday, 162 on Wednesday, 161 on Saturday, 161 on Tuesday, 160. So the average daily weight is 162 pounds. We add up all of those weigh-ins 808 pounds. We divide by six, the number of weigh-ins for 162. And then repeat that process. And let's say the average is 161. Great. If they're cutting, that is a good sign. If it is 163, that is not necessarily a bad sign. It depends what is happening in the mirror, what is happening with their body composition. But if after several rounds of six weigh-ins, the weight is going up, and the waist is getting bigger, for example, body composition is not getting leaner in the mirror, then that just means they have to make some adjustments. So that's a simple process. It's a clean process. And if you want more of my wisdom on how to measure and how to improve your body composition, pick up a copy of my new book, Muscle for Life Today. Go over to muscleforlifebook.com and Pre-order your copy. It comes out on January 11th. And then enter the giveaway. Instructions are on the page. And you can win all kinds of glorious fitness goodies. Again, I'm giving away over $12,500 of stuff. So go check it out, muscleforlifebook.com. Hey, and welcome to Muscle for Life. I am Mike Matthews. Thank you for joining me today. And if you haven't already, please do take a moment to subscribe to the show in whatever app you are listening to me in so you don't miss any new episodes. And it helps me because it boosts the ranking of the show in the various charts. Now, this episode is me going on Pat Flynn's podcast, and not the smart passive income Pat Flynn, but the Chronicles of Strength and Pat Flynn show, Pat Flynn, the fitness Pat Flynn. And he and I and his co-host James Madden talked about easy fitness wins. And it was a lot of me talking because I was the guest on the show. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to share this discussion here on my podcast because I think that you, dear listener, will like it. Now, what are easy fitness wins? Well, they are easy things you can do right away to improve your fitness in some capacity. Sometimes it's directly improving your physical fitness, and sometimes it's more about the inner game. It's more about uh, improving your 
motivation, improving your habits, or just maintaining your habits. We are coming into the holiday season. And for a lot of us, that means schedule disruptions, diet disruptions. We are probably not going to be getting in all of our normal workouts. We are probably not going to be following our normal meal plans. And that is totally fine. That is part of enjoying the holidays. And I I, I do that myself, so I recommend that to everyone. Don't let rigid adherence to your normal routine get in the way of enjoying time with your friends and family. You can have your cake and eat it too, literally. You can stay active, uh, go after some of these easy wins that we are going to share with you in this podcast and minimize the quote unquote damage, minimize the fat gain really is what most of us are concerned about, right? We don't want to gain too much fat. We don't want to lose too much muscle. And so it's fairly easy to minimize fat gain and to at least maintain muscle and strength over the holidays. So then in the new year, we can get back to what we normally do and quickly and by quickly, I mean within a couple of weeks, lose any fat that we might have gained and quickly get right back to our normal training regimen, our normal weights, our normal volume, and so forth. And lastly, but not leastly, this episode will also be helpful for people who are just starting out in their fitness journeys, because depending on where you're at, it might not make sense for you to try to go all in on my bigger, leaner, stronger, or thinner, leaner, stronger program right away. For example, it might make sense for you to ease into that level of meal planning and weightlifting. And that, by the way, is why I wrote a new book specifically for people who are new to all of this and specifically for people who are new to all of this and in the 40 plus crowd. And that book is called Muscle for Life. It is available for pre-order right now at muscleforlife, forlifebook.com. And so if you are just starting out, Muscle for Life will help you as well as the information in this podcast, because as you will learn, there are very simple things you can start doing right away to start improving your fitness, to start improving your body composition, and to start building the most important habits that are going to allow you to get and stay fit for the long term. Rock and roll. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I am joined by my now regular co-host, Dr. Jim Madden, and we have the great pleasure, indeed the honor, to be joined once again by the master <laughs> himself, Mike Matthews from Legion and, and Muscle for Life. It's been a while, Mike. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to our, oh, I think I, I saw it on my calendar in the next week or two, we're going to be having some fun again, Pat, on my show. Yeah, let's let's talk about that uh, for a minute. We're, we're going to talk about some easy fitness wins in this episode. So I think this will be really appropriate for just the holiday season coming up and just help people build momentum and stuff like that. Yep. We're also going to talk about a new book you have coming out. But your podcast has been a lot of fun because um, – I think I think it started. We, you wanted to just have me on to talk kettlebells, and it went so delightfully off the rails. Uh, I think we started talking about politics and philosophy and religion, and we enjoyed it so much that we've kind of made it a a semi regular series. And Jim joined us for one of them on philosophy of mind. So I don't know if we have a topic for the next one, but if if anybody wants. Uh, something that is on a fitness podcast. I, we don't actually. We, we yeah, usually. But, <laughs> I think we <laughs> maybe maybe for once we'll actually put a little bit of forethought into it. it yeah. Well, I think it's best when, when when we don't. And the one thing I just and then we'll we'll hit the topic at hand that I really appreciated about those conversations, Mike, is that and, and Jim and I have talked about this a lot. Is you know we agree on a number of things, but you know we have different positions on a lot of other things, and. Uh, you, like we just had a really productive conversation amidst disagreement, right? And um, how lacking that is in today's world. So I always, I always just remember those conversations we have as like, dang, if only, if only all conversations could like model this yeah, really. when people disagree, right? Because it's it's frustrating where we are in today's world. But anyway, I mean, I personally like being challenged. Mm -hmm. I, I like those types of discussions, even where the tables are turned. I mean, obviously, if I'm, if I'm interviewing you, I'm mostly just listening and I'm trying to just shut up because that's what most people want in an interview. But uh, to, the, they're, and this is something I've, I've said many times, I, I actually wish if I look back 
over the course of maybe even my just my business career, but also also in my personal life, I would have I would have valued. I, I have a couple of these people in my life now, particularly in business, who will challenge my thinking, who I can go to and I can say, "Hey, this is what I'm thinking about strategically." You know, I have A, B, or C. Which of these doors I think A makes sense? And mm-hmm. you know, one of my good friends, he, he is. Uh, he's a very nice guy, but he's very straightforward. He'd be like, nah, it doesn't make sense. Here, let me explain to you why if I were you, I would take door B. And I really value those discussions. Like I am not uh, a a very defensive person. Uh, Certainly not. I don't quickly retreat into that bunker mentality. Mm -hmm. And I I have maybe a couple of contacts in my personal life who, who would do the same, but it's interesting that I've had to cultivate that kind of relationship with a few people where I've had to show them that I'm not going to just argue for the sake of arguing. And initially, when they would give me that kind of advice, they would, it would, there'd be a lot of preamble, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To try to soften it and, oh yeah, I totally understand what you're thinking about there. And you could totally do that, but you might want to consider. And, and then I would be like, you don't, you don't have just, just you don't, you don't have to soften it. Yeah. If you think it's, if I'm you think a, it's I'm a stupid, man, right. yeah, just tell me it's just stupid. stupid. I just yeah. want a better idea. I don't care if it's my idea, right. your idea. I don't give a shit. I just want mm-hmm. to be more right. And if, if you can give me that shortcut, just give it to me. Right. And if I, if I disagree uh, and, I, and I can actually articulate why, I will. But I also will be inclined to listen to what you have to say because in the case of business, what I'm thinking about it, this is somebody who I, his net worth, I don't know, is at least five, six hundred million dollars. Like I, I, you tell me. You know what I mean? You, you've already done uh, more than yeah. I I I I might ever do in my in my life, or might even want to do in my life in terms of. There's a reason why wealth. you asked him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and I just uh, I I don't I can't say that I know very many people who actively seek out not just advice mm-hmm. but criticism. Uh, in, criticism. Yeah. yeah or right. or or I mean, if we wanted to be maybe. Um, less less inflammatory because criticism again is 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 one of those terms that immediately triggers that reaction in people at least just seek out counterpoints Mm -hmm. but you know right well that's why we keep jim around because he doesn't let me get away with any bullshit that's true that's true that's true (laughs) he doesn't yeah (laughs) he's he's the the bullshit detector he's the the bullshit detector. he's the the shock proof bullshit detector that's right yeah i like it (laughs) um and you know pat knows like i'm very open to changing my mind about things too Right. I'm, I'm, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I actually frustrate a lot of my colleagues that way, but, uh, you know, like one of the, like the keys to failure is to surround yourself by sycophants. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like we can go through, you know, historically, like that's one of the great downfalls is when as soon as people get powerful enough to hire people who agree with them, right. This is, this is the end, right. Cause they're going to like enter their own fantasy world. And I, I would rather not live in a fantasy world. I want to live in the real. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for practical reasons and even for theoretical reasons. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am happy to be disagreed with. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we need to uh, not to get too sidetracked right away on the conversation, but this is a good point. It's like we just need to get over this really wimpy mentality. You know, I was I was fortunate enough to have some coaches early on, especially a guitar coach uh, where he emphasized, look, I'm going to criticize you, Pat, and it might seem like I'm overly critical. But it's because I care that I'm criticizing you. And my job is to make you better. So I'm not going to tell you how handsome you are. You're not handsome, but I'm not going to tell you it anyways. But I'm going to tell you where you suck at the guitar and you need to improve. And that's what we're going to focus on because – if you're good at something, I don't need to tell you about that. You're already yeah. fine. You already right? know you're good at it. Just hug right. yourself every day. You're fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I had to ha- I had to have a pretty hard conversation with my son the other day. He's in he's in the th- he's in uh, second grade, but I gave him a ninth grade uh, level book to read. Actually, I gave him I gave him how to read a book by Mortimer Adler, and I've given nice. him a science regimen because nice. he's a smart kid and he can do it. And so I wrote up in a little exam for him on this, you know, a- appropriate but challenging, and. Um, and he, and he failed and he there was going to be a reward if he passed and he gave it to me and I had to look, I said, I said, you know, Roan and he is, he's a really smart kid. I'm like, you just didn't pass, bud. You just didn't pass. And that was, that was hard for him. Uh, but then, you know what he did after he, he kind of, you know, sobbed a little bit. Uh, he went back on his own accord, did better rose to the challenge and then and then passed right yep. now i could have been you know and like it's it's hard for a parent to criticize their kid like what i want to do is just be like oh you you did good enough son let's go yeah. play some video games right but that that isn't that actually isn't caring right it's it's this kid's development uh that i that i care about because i love my son and that means that i i had an obligation to be direct with him in that situation so 
I am constantly trying to set up occasions for my kids to fail. Right. Yeah, I kind of am too, man. It's kind of yeah, sinister, you know, right? You know, I mean, you know, um, and hoping they'll win, but, you know, if, if you protect them from failure, I mean, we, this is a familiar story now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sound really, really cruel here, right? Mm -hmm. But um, anytime any one of my kids has ever done, you know, in a sporting event, you know, they've come off the mat or they've come off the field and said, well, you know, I lost, uh, but I still had fun. And I'm like, I'm always like, no, no, it would have been more fun if you won. Like, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not lie about that, right? Okay, and let and like and if you didn't come here to win this, right? We don't need to pay money for recess. Okay, I mean like we're we're trying to win. I mean, now every time every time one of my kids comes off a field or a mat or anything like that, the first thing I do is I give them a hug and a kiss and I tell them I love them. Okay, so right. I'm not saying like victory is like a condition of my love for you, but yeah. to act like there wasn't a real possibility of failure and it happened is to like miss the point of the entire endeavor. Right. Spot on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, um so and, and, and yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, so this is really ironic because the topic for today is easy fitness wins. With yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are no easy fitness wins. But that's a really important point. So however we tie that in, we'll tie it in. I guess, I guess the general point is like, look, if you're looking I'm, to improve yourself, don't surround yourself with sink offense. Look, uh, look for people who are willing to criticize because they care. I think that's the point. Yeah. Mike, yeah. Any other further thoughts on that? And then we'll turn to your. I mean, I think I think we can we can segue actually in that uh, I, I agree with with everything you guys were saying. However, if we if we look now at fitness, and particularly if we look to people who are just getting started, who are trying to overcome inertia, who are trying to reach that critical mass where the amount of forward progress you've made is motivating you to want to keep going, failures early on can be. Um, I mean, if we just look at the practical reality of it, if we if we look at things as they are, maybe rather than as we wish they were with people, and this mm -hmm. is in my experience, and I'm sure, Pat, you've had the same experience working with a lot of just normal everyday people who are not fitness freaks, they're not trying to compete, they, they just want to lose some weight, build some muscle, get healthy, feel good, look good, that that first three to six months is crucial and that you build momentum in that first three to six months. And if you experience too many failures in the beginning, uh, some people, of course, will rise to the occasion and they'll just keep going and they won't give up. But many people do give up. And and, and I, do, I do have some empathy for them because I remember if I rewind to when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm a, when it comes, I, I'm not in I probably am like not a quitter to a fault, you know, like I don't even like to stop reading books that I don't like. I'll go 30 pages without a highlight. And I'm, I'm like, I really should stop reading this book. Mm -hmm. And I still want to keep going. That's yep. just I always point. finish it, man. I always finish I know it. <laughs> that's my personality. And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But but many people, uh, many people are not like that, maybe even a little bit more, maybe balanced, well balanced in that regard. Right. And so uh, if you if you look again through the 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 eyes of of that type of person especially somebody who has tried many things in the past and they have failed and they've really tried they put in that effort and 30 60 90 days and it sucked and they couldn't eat anything they liked and they were doing workouts they hated and maybe they lost a little bit of weight and then finally when they tried to go back to some sort of normal living it all just came back on and you mm -hmm. experience that again and again, and and a small failure in the beginning carries a lot of emotional weight, right? Because right. of mm -hmm. the past experiences. So that's where I think trying to trying to intentionally go for for some of these easy wins in the beginning can make sense. Yeah, yeah. you, you yeah, have I, to learn. You have to learn to win. Like there has to be an occasion to actually win. So there has to be a possibility of loss. But 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 if you get over your head, you're learning to be a loser, right? Mm -hmm. Right. This sure. is like we. That's like, why we need like belt ranks, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if everybody had to compete against a black belt, well, everyone would quit after their first tournament because it would just be impossible. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. We yep. need. We, you know, we need to scale this, right? So there have to be real legit possibilities of victory, right? Right. Uh, so you learn to think of yourself as a winner, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, anybody, really anybody who has played sports or learned an instrument or or really pursued any sort of technical skill knows that the sweet spot for learning is uh i mean if we were to even assign some 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 numbers to it it's probably like okay if you're going to try to do something 10 times and you you can't even get it right two or three times it's just too hard right if you can yeah. get it right let's say seven eight nine times it's probably a bit too easy and mm -hmm. you should make it a little bit harder uh, but if you start off at too high of a 
you're trying you know, have a learning curve and you're just trying to leap to uh, you know, the top of it or, or three quarters of the way up, that doesn't work for most people. It just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. And, and, you know, the, there's a sort of cliche that big doors swing on little hinges and Jim, I think both of us sort of have a fitness story that, that reflects this, right. It's like each of us in our sort of own unique way, seem to just make a, a few simple changes that that quickly led to some very inspiring results right and you're, yeah. you're you've talked about this before of like these sort of just simple rules uh, whatever they are maybe getting a protein target maybe getting a calorie swing maybe you just start swinging kettlebells right whatever they are realistic simple rules where you do see and by by quick means we don't mean like i want to be careful with the language here because this isn't like the secrets they don't tell you about kind of crap we're talking about, right? It's just like, no, like one this, weird trick, <laughs> one yeah. weird trick. It was like a picture of banana or whatever the heck the ad is. Right? It's just like, <laughs> no, it, it has to be Pat like Flynn. a banana with worms coming out of it or something. <laughs> yeah, Pat, right. Pat Flynn's secret biohack that will change your life. Right. right. We're talking really about, uh, yeah, like simple tweaks that make a big difference that can build momentum. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it's going to be simple. So let's dive into this a little bit, Mike, what did you have in mind here? And, uh, what are some, and I think this, really good because look new year's is coming up people are going to look for like some wins that they can score early on to build that momentum so let's dive in mm -hmm. so uh, a simple a simple one a simple example of kind of a tiny habits approach right is just start going for a walk every day for this, yes. this would obviously be for somebody who's not doing that currently who's rather sedentary instead of going from that to oh i'm going to do mike's bigger leaner stronger program five days a week an hour a day in the gym i've never even touched a weight before but i'm going to do it many people do that that's fine and and those people i think they know who they are because the the prospect of doing that excites them it doesn't it doesn't trigger that resistance and friction that excites them fine but in a lot of people that is not the place to start why don't we just start real simple can you go for uh, a 30 minute walk every day and or 15 minutes even and if you want some bonus points can you do it in nature like a, a, a where, where you have some pretty green around you right because that can is that, is, can is that the thing you. that's on the other side of my front door is that what that's uh, it's uh, it's not yeah i mean it's in the it's outside of the metaverse so it doesn't right. really matter <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah zuckerberg says we shouldn't care about it so there, there's a there's a, a beautiful kind of a, a river walk path in, in our downtown where i live and um i walk on there every morning right catch the sunrise down there and uh whenever i'm walking home i i always i have to walk past the local ymca and I always see the people on the treadmills mm -hmm. walking. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's not even cold out. <laughs> yeah. You know, so now I'm you know, walk. Yeah. To, to, I guess, though, to, to argue on their but, behalf, if yeah. somebody, if they just know that, uh, you know, getting in the gym just yep. is part of their routine and they're a little bit more likely to stick to it. And maybe, let's say, after they get off the, the treadmill, now they're inclined to go do some kettlebell swings yep. or they're inclined to do. A, a short resistance training workout of some kind, then to that person, I would say, let's, let's just keep it like that. If, yeah. if that's working, you know, and it's a social thing too, because it's the same people True. every day they're True. talking. So, but that binds them to the practice, right? True. That there's a community around. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also to, 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 uh, to, to play up the benefits of walking a little bit more, a lot of people don't realize that you burn a fair amount of calories walking, a few hundred calories per hour, which is not which is not nothing. And you actually, you can increase that if you want by walking a little bit faster. You could throw on a backpack with some books in it, just add some weight that won't make much of a difference for for your experience of the walk but but it can it can further increase the calorie burn so for people who want to let's say they're starting out and they want to lose weight and they've just learned about the importance of energy balance and uh, maintaining a calorie deficit then uh, th there is value also there in walking many people when they particularly when they first start out, they think that walking, they think that to, to, to really move the needle with, with cardio, it has to be very intense, even high intensity interval or nothing. Right. Yeah. And, and that's not true. And in, in fact, I, I wouldn't recommend probably more than maybe an hour of high intensity interval training per week. And, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but if you mm -hmm. are going to do it, I still would recommend uh, taking the total time that you have to exercise, giving most of it to training your muscles, and then uh, putting less time into your cardio. And if you're going to do high intensity, 
keep it keep it moderate because it does put a lot of strain on right. the body. Here's just a, a practical question here. This is really for for both of you. Um because we, we know walking's good, right? But it's kind of something you know either by just being familiar with the research or having just done it and experienced it, right? But the problem is the, the people are in this mindset that you've identified, Mike, where it's just like it just seems like walking is so unsexy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if I'm not doing the the CrossFit seven times a week, then 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 why even bother? Type of thing, right? How do you help people get over that that hurdle of doing the unsexy but simple things that actually that actually work? You know. And, and this is uh, yeah, it's a good question. And particularly with again, if we're speaking to people who are new or people, let's say who are not necessarily new, but they 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 they, they come in and out of of of. Uh, a fitness habit, and now we're going into the holidays, which is where they usually fall out of it, um, and then they try to get back into it. Right? Is uh, I think I think the easiest way to do that is to find something you enjoy, like something that you actually like. It can be hard, and you're not going to like every workout, like every minute of every workout. But generally speaking, you look forward to it more than you dread it, and right. and that that's that's true for any type of training even if we're talking about hard somebody who's uh saying all right i want to get jacked that's what i want to do i would i would much rather put together a program for them that maybe is not scientifically optimal in terms of the exercises or some other component of the program but they like it and if i were to give them the most scientifically optimal program for getting jacked and they really don't like it then what i know is compliance is going to suffer. And even if they are the grittier type and they're like, I don't care if I hate it, I'll go do it every day. What will always happen is they are not going to be as engaged in those workouts. And that is going to impair their performance. You, you have better workouts when you are enjoying them. That, that's just, that's just an unfortunate fact of being yeah. a human. Right. And so, so this is, this is also an easy, uh, an easy win is when people are first starting out, find something that you like talk about you know the social aspect that's one of the reasons why many people like fitness classes is mm -hmm. because they have their little they it's like a little community they they meet people they like they're all in it together is is a fitness class the most scientifically optimal way to transform your body composition no it's not but if you like it a lot more than the stuff I do, which is very unsexy, anybody who follows me on Instagram sees I post my workouts almost every day, and they are, it's the same type of training. I mean, I practice what I preach. It is not sexy. I enjoy it, but it's, you know, picking heavy things up and putting them down mostly. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. But I mean, like, what's sexy about? I just want to drive this because I think it's important to people to just, if you get this conceptually, then maybe this will help clear the barrier for you. But I mean, the stuff that is actually effective is typically not like sexy to watch as you're practicing it. I mean, there's like, kind of an I, inverted relationship. Right, right. Yeah. I, I've got my guitar right here. The higher right here. the sex value, uh, the lower right. the efficacy. Yeah, I've got my guitar right here. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good player, I think, right? But like most of what I do in guitar is just really boring exercises. It's not sexy playing, right? You're it's drilling. Just, it's drilling. Same thing with jujitsu, right, Jim? Like, what do we do? Well, it's like when we're just watching the practice, it's pretty boring, right? But it works towards a sexy outcome. Same thing with like good training is like at any particular point, it might not seem that sexy, right? Because we're not competing. We're just practicing something. But you're working towards something that is itself good, productive, exciting. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I would even say, you know, find something you enjoy and even better, find something you want to get good at. Mm, right, because mm -hmm. I, th I, th I think that will hold you to it in a way, right? You know, and, um, and just just to segue on. quickly on uh, from from that to let's let's talk about uh, strength training in particular. Something that has helped in with me uh, with uh, helped me with with that is so I've been lifting weights now for twenty years. First eight years or so, I didn't know what I was doing, but at this point, I, there's not much muscle or strength left for me to gain, especially not at this body weight. If I want to stay fairly lean, if I were willing to put on 15 pounds, it wouldn't, most of it would not be actual muscle tissue. Uh, sure, I could get my numbers up a bit, but still, I'm, I'm basically at the end of my genetic rope for how big and strong I can get. And so people will ask me, what's my motivation? Why do I keep doing it? And um, something that, that 
is is fun, something that is is kind of a skill component, is every so I have four month training blocks basically. And at the end of each training block, I do a round of AMRAPs. So as many reps as I can do with ninety five percent of one RM from the beginning of that training block. So oh, okay. If things have gone well, that is no that's no longer actually ninety five percent of my one RM at, at that point. And 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 uh, you know, so a lot of my four months is, is cold. But man, that shows some test. progress. Yeah, yeah, that shows exactly. some progress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yep. in the last, in the last training block, uh, for example, uh, I, I was safety bar squatting and I, I wrapped up with 265 for eight is what I got. And so that's like a one RM of 320. I started that training block. Now I hadn't safety bar squatted in a while. So the, there is a skill component, just getting better at the activity. Yeah. And, uh, but, but that was a, a pretty significant can jump probably 30 or 40 pounds in one RM, which again, it's partly because I hadn't safety bar squatted in a long time, but still that's fun. And on my bench press, I was up 10 pounds and that that's pretty significant at my, where I'm at for four months. And so that's something with weightlifting in particular that, that makes it more fun as an experienced weightlifter. That's sort of what happened with me with, I I haven't, even though you know, I believe in barbells, and you know, I wrote a book about barbells. I haven't touched a barbell in years because it just, you know, I got to where in my forties, you know, I pulled a three hundred percent body weight deadlift, and I'm like, well, okay, no, there's nothing really left for me to do, and any yeah, attempt at progress cool. is getting really damn dangerous, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and so, and I have to admit, I just got bored to tears by it all, right? Uh, and I think you do have to find challenges goals, new skills mm-hmm. to hold yourself to it. Yeah. Cause at a certain point, like just looking good might not be enough. Right. Yep. So, right. Yeah. 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 And so this is like Olympic weightlifting for that reason. It's yeah. Right. Or, or, or more skill to it than, yeah. than, a, than a right. Or, or, yeah. or tie in something that like a martial art, right. Something, yeah. something outside of the weight room activity yeah. where you can now rather than, Oh, my deadlift is stronger. Oh, this movement pattern, like is clearly transferring to me being a more durable or stronger yep. in this yeah. in jujitsu or something like that. Right. You, mm-hmm. you know, um, the kind of a general point I think like is in the background of all this is, you know, I I have found, you know, with people that I'm either working with and like helping coach or just, you know, teammates of mine or something like that, I'll have people, you know, I I really want to get in shape and then, and, and, you know, they'll, they'll kind of like use what I'm doing as a model and they're, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do two a day workouts and I'm going to, I'm going to like eat ketogenic diet and I'm going to like have a 20 hour fast every day and not eat one day a week and do all this stuff. Right. And, and the, cause they think it's gotta be really hard. It's gotta be really, really what, hard. Isn't that yeah. hard 70, 75 hard? Yeah. Or something? Isn't that a yeah. thing? I, yeah. I just okay. saw yeah. somebody post yeah. that thing. I looked at yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. Just beat not... the shit out of yourself yeah. for yeah. a couple yeah. months. Yeah. It's like two, yeah. two 45 minute intense workouts a yeah. day. Yeah. And then yeah. a whole bunch of other stuff. Like who's going to, who on earth? <laughs> my my, uh, my fifty year old wife did it. Yeah, good. Well, hey, just, God just, bless yeah, her, man. Yeah, but, uh, but but she's but she's not a beginner, right? But I mean, she's that, she's, a, thing, she's right? a terminator from what she's I She's a terminator. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's mm-hmm. yeah, she's a terminator, right? But anyway, uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it honestly. Yeah. Well, and also, honestly, I, I don't because like, there's nothing there's nothing yeah. attached to, to that that I would care enough about to do yeah, it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Especially if you know that you could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not. It's not a matter of do you have the discipline or yeah. can you can you gut it out? If you know, sure, uh, I could, but yeah. for what? Just just to, to prove what I already know. Like, yeah. Well, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. The funny thing with the hard seventy five was when I looked at, it, I'm like, this is just this is kind of like a normal day for me. Actually, kind of a light day. <laughs> right? <I'm> just like, <laughs> you know. But anyway, so I always tell people look when they say, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to go keto and I'm going to fast. I'm going to have two day workouts and I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to meditate. I'm like, great cool but you know what uh it took me literally like 30 years of training to get to that point right where i can just just going back to the belts uh yeah exactly we got to go white belt and i I tell people like look your workout just using the workout uh leaving diet aside your workout doesn't have to be great it doesn't have to be hard it has to be Mm-hmm. It has to yeah. exist. It has first. to come into yeah. being first and foremost. And and I think when people think that you know, they go to the gym and it's got to be this like magical moment of a PR or a near puking CrossFit kind of workout or something like that, um, when really uh, just just getting in there, right? And I think people a lot of times feel like I can't go in there and perform really awesome today. I feel like crap. Uh, it's not going to be magic, so they don't go, right? Just show up just show up just showing up is the key <laughs> for this right and find something you can scale to where you're at so it's easy for you to show up right and you know 30 years down the road you might be like 
a psychopath, right? But that's right. Yeah. And and just a, a point to add to that, something that has been useful for me is uh, if, for example, um, I, I really didn't sleep well, I'm not, I'm not feeling too good, I wasn't able to take a nap, and I'm supposed to go do a heavy lower body workout, mm-hmm. supposed to do some heavy squats and other things, I might swap that for the following day's workout, which is an upper body, not as difficult session. Um, in hopes of sleeping better that night, and yeah. then do that the heavy hard yeah. stuff the following day, uh, and and I I recommend that to people you know be a little bit flexible with your programming yeah. and and it is better for people who are more experienced so because you understand you have enough experience to know like I'm not just making excuses here I, I'm really going to have a more productive session if I ha- ha- have slept more than five hours <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> you know? right. mm-hmm. and I, I that's that's a great point Mike I th- I think. If you're going to do really set piece programming, you have to have like a concession to a bad day built into it. Yep. Mm-hmm. But there's no guarantee next Thursday I can go ninety percent. Right. Exactly. Just, okay. Like, the, just there's no guarantee. Right. That's a gr- that's a great yeah. point. That's you awesome have to look. you yeah. have to be able to afford a bad day because because mm-hmm. you're going to have a bad. I, I've struggled with this especially when I was powerlifting. Right. You know where I would have these sixteen week programs pre meet. You know, and in and in week eight I got to hit. You know. 90% for three doubles. Yeah. But what if, what if I suck that day and now the program is shot? Right. Yep. So what do I do? You know, uh, I think you've got to have bad days built into it. Yeah. Yep. So, so let's, um, so this is, this is great. Cause I think, I hope this will be really both helpful and, and inspiring to people again, whether you're just starting out or you're just trying to like course correct before the new year or even before the new year, there's no need to wait to the new year to, to do any of this stuff. Right. I mean, why, do it now, why, do it now. Why at mass- least, at least you can start yeah. getting into the habit now. I mean, for people yeah. mm-hmm. take, take the walks yeah. or maybe it's daily kettlebell swings or daily, any sort of exercise yeah. activity that they can do and stick with right. understanding that, yeah, diet is going to be a bit bit wonky for for the next couple of weeks and it may or may not but but for somebody who knows they have these holiday parties coming up and they do want to enjoy themselves they don't have to necessarily be egregious about it but Mm -hmm. they also don't want to be uh feeling guilty because they ate uh, a muffin or something you You, you don't have to maximize the damage though (laughs) yes yes and and yeah just just don't for 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 me it's like you know, take Thanksgiving or, or Christmas dinner or whatever. I'm going to enjoy myself, but yeah. I don't eat to the point uh, of what, what did Louis, Louis C.K. say, where I hate myself, you know, <laughs> where, yeah. to, to, to where, to where, and I've done that in the past just kind of for fun. And then yeah. I, I was like, right. it's, it's no longer <laughs> yeah. fun just, just to be on the couch yeah. for 45 minutes sweating, uh, yeah. you know, just, yeah. just can't, can't even move. No longer fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, but also like, I mean, let's 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 get a sense of of perspective and proportion here. I mean, like, look, even if you hate it, even if you, even if you ate to hate yourself, right, uh, on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, uh, but all the other days are kind of like yeah. on target. Like, it's not going to make any any difference. It right? makes now, no difference. Now you shouldn't do that. Hey, what's the, problem- the most? What's the most fat you can gain in an entire day? I've yeah. written about this. I've looked at some of the research. Let's and, find and, out. And, <laughs> It, it, yeah, I mean, maybe yeah. it's a pound or so, yeah. but you really have to go for that. Uh, right, yeah. that, the, that that that's going to be the, many thousands of calories. The, the prop, yeah, probably the, some alcohol as well to really maximize fat storage. Okay, yeah, you have to the, get up early to eat extra. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So it's just it's like you know the sense of perspective yeah. like really helps. The problem is when people turn Thanksgiving into all of November. And Christmas into all of December, yeah, yeah, and exactly. there's there's no reasonable reason to do that, right? Yeah, uh, that's I mean, that's like, not a good mindset. We, um, we don't we don't have to make you know the holidays diabetes season, right? right? Mm-hmm. You know, like you just ha- have a couple good days in there. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent. Now you said daily kettlebell swings. I like this because that was Jim. Like that's kind of your story, right? I mean, it was like yeah. just simple kettlebell workouts, right? You lost simple kettlebell workouts, simple nutrition. You lost over a hundred pounds, right? Yep. Uh, which is phenomenal. And obviously you've gone not just to sustain that, but to build significantly upon it. I've always liked the idea and Mike and Jim, I'll be curious to get your thoughts on this of like, and I guess this is sort of in line with the idea of having bad days kind of built in, not that you want a bad day, but just realistic understanding that some, sometimes the kids are going to be up all night. You're not going to get a good night's yeah. sleep and whatever they will come of kind of having floor and ceilings. Um, right. So like I got the, I got my ideal ceiling. Here's what I would love to hit workout wise. Uh, Mike's, bigger, leaner, stronger, do all the sets, all the reps, get to the gym, feel great. 
But, you know, kids were up all night. Don't feel good. So at the very least, look, I can do a kettlebell swing and push-up ladder, right? At the very least, it'll take 10, 15 minutes. It's an easy win. I'm going to feel good after that. Uh, I'll get my calorie burn in. I'll build some strength, some muscle. It wasn't wasn't the ideal, yep. but it was doing – you know, it was always something rather than all or but, nothing. But it was. <laughs> But it, yeah. but it was, it, it was. was, it came into existence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was distinguished from nothing. It had an active existence yes. and that's uh that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. What are, what are your thoughts on that, Mike and, and Jim? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's perfection is not necessary in any of this. And that, that is, I, I think also uh, a mistake. And you know, I, I made it in the beginning is thinking that you have to be basically perfect with like take that when i first i remember when i learned about energy balance and macros and um i was surprised wait it's this simple to, to lose fat all i have to do is eat like 2200 calories a day and get enough protein and that's it like i don't it doesn't matter how many carbs it doesn't even matter what i'm eating i, I couldn't believe it really at first this is again before i even understood the principles this was introduced to me by uh he was a bodybuilder power lifter he didn't explain why um he was he was shredded. He was getting prepped for a contest, and I and he was working at a at like a, a what was it? Um, it's kind of like a Whole Foods, like a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I simply asked him. I was like, "How? How, how do you? Do, how did you? How do you do this?" And he's like, "Oh well, how much do you weigh? Yeah, whatever. Just like twenty. You go go online, figure this out. Twenty two hundred calories, two hundred grams of protein a day. I don't care about carbs and fat, right? And uh, so I I did that, and then I got pretty lean for the first time. But mm -hmm. I remember, like, I would text him saying, "Hey, uh, his name is Stephen. Hey, Stephen, uh, I'm gonna go for my cheat meal this week, which uh, I've I've changed my outlook on cheat meals a little bit as well. But uh, I'm gonna go get sushi." Is it okay if I get two spicy tuna rolls and uh, maybe like Dude, I, first of all, I love maybe like emo emoji? Yeah, I, I always love that sushi is kind of like the default cheat meal. It's kind of my I know. cheat meal too, Jim. It's yours too, isn't it? It's like yeah, sushi yeah. is like it's just I don't, yeah, it's because yeah. it's you know it's it's tasty, it's high protein. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still broadly like healthy depending yeah, it's, on the it's type like, of roll you like, get. It's like right? you know you've yeah. gotten to a fitness place when sushi is your cheat meal. Right? Well, that's right. the black <laughs> man, That is the yeah. black belt level, right? Yeah, yeah and, exactly. Yeah, and and but but my point is. I, I didn't understand again that um, how much wiggle room you have, and mm -hmm. the 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 fitness elite. None of them are perfect. They are just the ones who are good enough most of the time in the ways that yeah. matter the most. They just miss the fewest workouts, and yeah. they screw up maybe the fewest meals, or or go way off plan the fewest or the the least often, really, right? And uh, so so that so that I think that that mentality. That mentality helps, and and it's probably worth mentioning an easy diet win that can work toward that black belt level uh, would be just taking where you're at right now, and can can we just make some slight modifications? So maybe instead of the fried chicken for dinner, can we do baked chicken, or maybe maybe air fried chicken, which you can yeah. get like the same kind of result for for fewer calories. Maybe can we instead just get rid of the pop tart. I mean. Just yeah, or can yeah. can we replace the pop tart with a protein bar and maybe yeah. a, a tasty protein bar yeah. so you still get a little bit of uh, enjoyment out of it? <laughs> yeah. uh, the pop tart. I forgot yeah. those things existed. <laughs> and that I mean that was that that remember how popular pop tarts yeah. uh, were Dude, man, and, like that, when I was, I, I am, when that was the rage like yeah. people were uh they were doing it just because you could. Oh, to I go to show how of, how bad. tarts a day and i can still have abs to go to show how bad like uh, like school lunch programs sometimes are i remember literally in high school like you could get like two of my friends would always get two of the um s'mores it was for whatever it was always the s'mores pop tart right the, <laughs> that, was the, that was the one yeah. and then they could go and get a cookie afterwards yeah it was nuts yeah. Right. It was nuts. Um, is that, is that uh, nutrition pyramid approved? Probably. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess probably, so, man. Yeah. I guess so. But it's like, man, that was the, and it, like usually like they would have my lunch table. We were all a bunch of degenerates. Some people ate healthier than we did. But the fact that like you could even get away with this was pretty ridiculous. You go get a fried spicy chicken sandwich, the, the s'mores pop tart, and then a, a giant cookie. Right. And with like a <laughs> yeah. chocolate. Milk, yeah. Dude. Yeah. And <laughs> then and then you're going to go get medicated for uh, having ADHD. Exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You're just right. Like, yeah. And yeah. wash it down with a caffeinated drink too. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dude. Right. Yeah. Which so, they would sell um, in the school store. They'd sell like Red Bulls and stuff like this. It's like, oh yeah, these kids are out of control. We need to, <laughs> we need to pump yeah. them full of meds. Right. Yeah. So, that's what they need. 
Did you know that right now I am in the middle of a big book launch bonanza for my new fitness book for men and women of all ages and abilities, Muscle for Life, which is releasing on January 11th and is currently available for pre-order over at Muscle for Life book.com muscle for life book.com and why should you pre-order well to invoke an electrochemical response in your brain and stimulate something approximating joy i am celebrating the release of this new book by giving away over twelve thousand dollars of glorious fitness goodies including a bowflex c6 bike that's a thousand bucks a hypervolt go that's 200 bucks an instant pot duo crisp air fryer, another 200 bucks, a Vitamix E310 blender, 350 bucks, a 30 minute zoom call with yours unruly. And that is priceless, of course, and much, much more. Now, there are several ways to enter to win, too. You can buy books, you can spread the word, you can follow me on social media, and more. So again, to get all of the giveaway sauce, go over to muscleforlifebook.com, muscleforlifebook.com. Something I've, I've used to help people out on the making small changes of diet thing is, uh, is a food journal. Okay. Yep. Uh, what, I, what I'll say is, look, and I, I did this once. Uh, at a point where I, I had kind of fallen back a little bit and I realized that I need to make some changes. So I did a food journal for like two weeks and tried to really be honest about it. And I had realized I was still, I wasn't eating very much garbage at all, but I was eating a metric ton of food. I was eating mm -hmm. way more than I had to. Okay. And uh, what I tell people to do is like, do that journal, be as honest about it as you possibly can. I'm not saying you have to do it forever. Just give yourself like a week or two. Okay. And then look at that journal and just what is the stuff that you see in there that is clearly part of like a death wish, right? <laughs> you know, like, like what is like just the obvious, you know, grown human being should not be eating this, right? Yeah. And just cut that out, right? And go for a couple of weeks without that and just see if the scale moves. The scale is a move, go look, go back and look at, okay, what else is on that list that really just should not be in a human diet? Cut that out. And as soon as you get the scale or, or, moving, or make a make a replacement. Yeah, right? yeah, like, always make, make take, a replacement. Take the yeah. Frappuccino ridiculous eight hundred calorie, I don't even know. They might even yeah. might be a thousand plus calorie drink. Can can we turn that into it doesn't even have to be an Americano per se, but can we turn it into like a cappuccino, maybe? So you know, six yeah. to eight ounces of milk with some espresso. It yeah. doesn't even have to be all right, get rid of your coffee. Maybe some stevia instead of you know, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, even yeah, yeah. hey, exactly. if you're drinking if you're drinking sugar sweetened soda, would we like to get you to just drinking water? Yes, absolutely. But if you're not ready to make that jump just yet, because let's say you are dieting and that's that's something that is is nice and then you enjoy the sweetness and it and it just it, it's something you look forward to, then can we switch to a diet soda? And uh, I, I, as far as artificial sweeteners go and the ongoing controversy over them, uh, my, my position, my understanding of the weight of the evidence is if you are, let's say, having eight to 10 plus servings of artificial sweeteners per day, every day, probably not the best thing for your health, probably not great for your gut health. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when I started Legion, I wanted all natural mm -hmm. products is I myself, I don't. I'm not interested in having six, eight, ten plus servings of sucralose a day. And if I'm going to use mm -hmm. my own stuff, right? But could you have uh, a diet soda, a can of diet soda every day, and be fine? Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah. And uh, if that helps, again, especially, and, and I just I, I bring that up because having worked with a lot of just again normal people who um, who sometimes will will struggle with things when they're dieting that maybe dude I'll, we, I'll speak to you man with, i was yeah. i grew i grew up on that soda. diet like, soda means something to like to, to, i to i did not drink water growing up i grew up on soda and sprite i guess they're the same thing right i grew up on pepsi and sprite so like this was another big issue like i had the worst nutritional offering we got really both did, beverages right? pepsi and sprite yeah no like that's that, that's what it was man it was really bad um so when I decided to get my act together, actually diet soda, I don't drink diet soda anymore, but uh, I'll tell you what, man, having like the Coke Zero or whatever, yep. that was a helpful sort of transition for me. Could I have done it without it? Yeah, maybe, probably. 
Um, but it was there. Well, why, and, why make it harder than it needs yeah. to be? So yeah, again, right. particularly yeah. when we're trying to help somebody gain enough momentum to really start to establish a lifestyle that they can stick with yeah. for the long term. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to just point that out. Just just even in my sort of process, the the little just that little switch to the diet soda was something that you know well, you made it a little bit easier. And then it's been years and years since I've had a diet. So like I'm not. Ter- like you give me a Coke Zero, I'll drink it, but it's I just don't yeah. crave. I just don't crave it. I, you know? I, I tasted wanna, Coke yeah. for the first time in years uh, mm-hmm. the other day, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, not, but no, not, I, not yeah, really I, for me. But yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, just g- good point, good point there, right? And then uh, what about just like protein too? That's an easy win, right? Just like get get your protein up. I remember uh, Dr. Spencer uh, gives um, recommendation a lot of his clients. He's like, you know, if you're kind of coming from the standard American diet perspective, this isn't a universal rule, but maybe a general enough one. It's like just like double your protein half your carbs right like if you're coming from like the the fast food diet world like just yeah. double your protein half your carbs right yeah. um or at least double your protein and then that will yeah. probably you can even yeah start, start right there now. i mean if somebody is and this is i don't think this is asking too much for them to understand how much protein is in a few of if you were to ask them what are some higher protein foods that you like do you like chicken do you like uh, beef do you like high protein yogurt all right what do you like all right let's quickly just familiarize ourselves with how much protein is in a serving of these foods and we don't have to get out the scales for that we can just use our hands we can say all right a palm of, of uh, chicken all right, it's about 40 grams of protein all right cool a fist of yogurt and eh, 20 grams of protein and can we get you can we get this person to um anywhere from probably depending on their size uh, whether it's a guy or a girl whatever 150 to maybe 180 grams per day can can we get there and just just let's that's your meal plan so to speak is just getting enough protein let's not worry about any of the other stuff you're eating let's you just continue uh, ad libitum basically but we are going to just control your protein for a little bit. And what many people find is just by doing that, they, one, are less hungry throughout the day. So they automatically just start eating less because protein is very filling. Uh, and, and two, then, it, again, it builds momentum. They have the, the, the win of feeling uh, less hungry, then eating less junk, even if that doesn't make a a noticeable change in their body comp yet they can't see it in the mirror they know that it is good that Mm -hmm. now they are less hungry generally they know that eating more protein is is good they know some of the health benefits of that i can speak for for many women who have have in particular who have noticed more muscle tone right away which of course Mm -hmm. makes sense i mean women who are going from on average no more than probably 50 grams of protein per day i can think of cases where women i had them uh to your point jim like okay a simple food log what what are you eating like 30 grams some days like no protein to 120 130 140 grams per day and they were amazed at again how much fuller they were uh how how many fewer cravings they had because they just weren't hungry and how it Again, it didn't, of course, like magically start burning fat, but they did start noticing that their muscles just felt a little bit tighter. They had a little bit higher energy levels, and those are easy wins that are just encouraging. Yeah, Right, spot on. Hey, we're going to take a question or two uh, at the end here, so if you have any questions for Mike or Jim or myself, send them in. But uh, before we get uh, to that, Mike, I want to talk about this new book you have coming out because like, this will be a, a good tie-in. Now, you are – you're a book guy. You got a lot of books out already. They're excellent. We've recommended them before, but you've got one coming up. So tell us about what this uh, new project is and where people can pre-order because it is pre-order right now. It isn't. Correct. It isn't out yet. Correct. All right. Yeah. Give us a yes, hint, my friend. Mm-hmm. So it's called Muscle for Life, which uh, is a. I, I figured that would make a good book title uh, a, a while ago. Consistent. And, and now <laughs> finally got around to doing it. Right. It's kind of. I guess. What is this? This is like the artist who then they release their self-titled album like years later right Mm -hmm. um but but it 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 is very much actually just in line with the conversation that we're having today so this is the book for people who are so i'd say it's really it's for one it's for people who are middle-aged and beyond specifically for them and the reason why I I wanted to write a book specifically for them as I've heard from so many people, 40s and beyond in particular, who will read Bigger, Leaner, Stronger or Thinner, Leaner, Stronger, and then who will write me asking if they can just jump right into this or do they need to make some changes. And in some cases, they don't need to make changes. But in many cases, I, I would 
I had copy and paste responses that I would modify as needed, but I would explain to them some of the modifications that I think are appropriate. Like take somebody who's 55 years old, a guy or a gal, uh, they have a lot of weight to lose and they've never touched a barbell or a dumbbell. They've never done any sort of resistance training. Are you going to tell them to right now start heavy squatting, bench pressing, deadlifting, overhead pressing? No. If you're training that person, you're not going to do that. You're going to, you're going to try to work them up to that, but that, that might take a year for them to get to that point where it makes sense for them to do that. Right. And, and also on the meal plan side of things, are you going to tell them to, um, get out the, the scale and the measuring cups and go all in on, on Excel? No, some people are ready for that and they will do that. But for, for many other people, it's just too much. It's, mm -hmm. it's trying to ask them to be the brown belt when they really just need to start with, right. with the white belt. And so that, that's muscle for life. It is, it is very user-friendly, particularly very, quote-unquote, newbie-friendly. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, on the training side of things, uh, whereas Bigger, Leaner, Stronger has, has one program and they have a few options. You have a three-, four-, or five-day option, but it mm -hmm. is uh, – power building, I guess would be the term, right? It mm -hmm. is for people who are ready to grab heavy dumbbells and, and barbells and pick them up and put them down. And of course, mm -hmm. they're starting where they're, where they're starting. If, if they can only squat, I mean, with many women, for example, maybe they can only squat the bar initially, but they're ready to go squat a bar, sure. right? Or maybe maybe with 25s or something mm -hmm. like that. In, in Muscle for Life, there's a beginner program for men and women, which is just body weight. Uh, it starts with building the basic movement patterns, um, with building some some muscle and strength. You can add some bands, and I talk about that as well. But but it's also you don't even need a gym for it, which is another hurdle that many people who are again, and this would apply not just to middle aged people, but people who have a lot of weight to lose who are very out of shape and understandably so are intimidated by gyms and particularly the free weight section where you have the sweaty gorillas groaning and grunting who ironically most of them are actually nice people and, and people learn that but but it is intimidating right the nicest very sweet yeah people. i mean often often actually um and and so so it starts with body weight some bands it then moves into some dumbbell exercises and even before you for for a for a, a pull or a hip hinge, right? So starting with a trap bar deadlift, not even a traditional deadlift, mm -hmm. and then moving into the advanced program uh, or programs, I would say those are those are kind of like light versions of bigger, leaner, stronger, and thinner, leaner, stronger. So now we're getting into some more traditional weightlifting, but it helps right. people mm -hmm. work up to that. On the meal plan side of things, I talk about uh, the importance of. Uh, understanding how calories in and calories out works and macronutrient works or, and, and, and how these, how these um, nutrients are, they affect your body in different ways. But again, I'm not asking people to weigh and measure everything that they eat. I teach them a pretty intuitive and, and simple system of, of portioning foods, again, just based on your hand, like for certain foods, for fattier stuff, you can use your thumb as a, as a reference point for proteins. You can use your palm as a reference point for carbs and other high protein foods, your fist. And uh, the point, the point of doing that is to just quickly get to a point where you understand approximately how many calories you should yeah. be eating mm -hmm, and what that good. kind of looks like, uh, just, just when you plate the food, what does that look like with the foods that you like to eat? Awesome. You know, I, I, Mike, well, obviously I'm going to link it in the show notes so people can go pre-order a copy and Hey, get, get more than one for a, a awesome I should ho mention holiday it. gift. Yeah. yeah I should, I, well, I should also I should mention that at, at muscleforlifebook.com, uh, musclefolifebook.com, mm -hmm. right now I'm doing a whole book launch giveaway where if people pre-order, um, it's going to be January 11th is when the book comes out. So I'll end it uh, on the 10th or the 11th. But up until then, I'm giving away over $12,000 of stuff. And we're I think we're actually over 13 or 14 now. We're just continuing to contact companies. And they're giving us some pretty cool stuff, awesome. like a $1,000 $1, uh, Bowflex bike, um, an air fryer, I mentioned that, um, <laughs> a, a set of uh, adjustable dumbbells from SmartFit, which are actually pretty nice. Awesome. Like This is real stuff. It's not just PDFs. And <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> where I Nothing against PDFs. Not yeah, if there's this, any huge PDFs fans out there but this is 
This has real existence, uh, right? Right. Well, the PDF that I say is worth, thick stuff, right? Uh, I, I say the PDF is worth a hundred dollars, you know, but <laughs> right, it's actually yeah. just a blog post that I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so anyway, at muscleflifebook.com, right now there, there are other ways to enter too, not just buying books, but. That makes it kind of fun. Awesome. But guys, go go pre-order. It's going to be cool. great. I recommend Mike's books. They're so practical. In fact, I, I recommend your stuff over my stuff sometimes. I had a guy who reached out not so long ago. He's like, Pat. I've done the Pat, same thing. When people are with kettlebells, yeah. just check out Pat. Yeah, no, because really it's much. like, you know, it's just a pre- like, look, I'm fine. I'm thank, thank, you know, thank God I'm fine. Right. And like, also just like the guy reached out to me. He's at a gym situation. He has goals. I'm like, and he's like, Pat, which are your kettlebell programs I should do? I'm like, honestly. Go buy Mike's book and just start with that. And he did. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's going awesome for him. So it's, I really do highly recommend your work. It's awesome. And people should definitely go get and pre-order this new book. Should we take a question or two, gentlemen? Let's do it. We got, we got a couple minutes here. Let me just highlight this one real quick because I, I just enjoy it. Shabby says, the guy in the middle looks like Magneto. I would not want to act with him. That, actually. No, I, don't, I, don't, I, I would think like Wolverine. If we're going to X-Men, I think, I think Jim's yeah. kind of more like Wolverine. Uh, I don't know about Magneto, Jim. Yeah, how do you know. how do you see yourself in yeah, X Men universe? I don't even know who Magneto is. The, the he's super the, he wears the him. helmet and he can man- manipulate uh, metal. That's Magneto. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he's I'm, he's, I'm, a, he's a bad dude. It's a compliment to be that's sure. Cool. Oh yeah, fair mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. Well, see, I'm I'm too busy actually trying to kill dudes. Uh, to know about <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, let's well, right now. I appreciate, well, I appreciate the compliment. It's the yeah. young, the yeah. young Mag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe it, I haven't seen those movies in a long time, so maybe there is a, a, a closer resemblance that I'm familiar with. All right, I Kirill appreciate has, the compliment, though. Yeah, yeah. Kirill has a question. Uh, hello from Finland. What do you guys think about this strategy? Heavy weights greasing the groove style, I guess, for for an easy win. So I'll say a few things, and I'll let you guys give your thoughts. So when I think greasing the groove, and this is kind of referencing Pavel's work, right? We're thinking generally, generally, like it's going to be submaximal frequent movement practice. So generally, or more often than not, probably not very heavy weights for greasing the groove. I mean, you might have an occasionally heavy session, but the idea is you're greasing the, the, the neurological grooves, trying to you know make more efficient the, the the mind muscle connection. So it's it's almost always, but not always, going to be like quite submaximal. So I'm a fan of that in terms of like easy wins because it's very practical. You know, you kind of take these movement sta- snacks, but I think if you're doing it frequently and heavy you're probably going to be inviting trouble but i'll let these gentlemen chime in yeah, mm-hmm. i agree 100 percent on that mm-hmm. right um yeah i mean it if if it's if it's really taxing it's too heavy <laughs> for that right if because because the grease in the groove is only going to work if you can come like think of pavel's original power of the people guy had you deadlifting like five days in a row <laughs> right, okay, so if you're going to do that, it's got to be pretty submaximal. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're going to come back and do it every day, you're going to do what was it two sets of five? I say and low volume. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. low volume. Yeah, it was never more than ten reps, and sometimes as few as like even four. Uh, and he would have you'd go every day, right? Now that's got a short shelf life. Eventually, it's going to get heavy. You can't do it. But um, I I like the GTG style. I still use that quite a bit, especially like on things like weighted pull ups and all that. Um, but you've got to really discipline yourself and like check your ego to do it. Yeah, Mike. I, any, I would any say mm-hmm. warm up sets. I mean, that's I, I've talked about using warm up sets for that, right? So um, I understand you you could make an argument against warm up sets altogether unless you are really lifting heavy weights, and that's fine. Uh, I've found in my own training and just having interacted with many people that. I find my performance probably a little bit better with uh, two warm up sets before I load the bar, for example. Um, but I, I make those warm up sets a little bit more productive with this mindset of really paying attention to my technique, um, lifting lifting explosively in those warm up sets. Just just getting the feeling of of being strong and and executing the lift correctly. And I think there's some value in that in improving technique when the weights are heavy. But I will say there is a difference. Uh, you know, I, I I I wouldn't say I'm a golfer, but I I put some time into it. I put enough. I put the amount of time that I'm willing to put into it, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's there's a difference. There's a difference between if we if we liken this to to golf, swinging at you know let's say fifty to sixty percent of of um, of intensity, so to speak. And it is, it's, it's, it's much easier to swing with proper technique at that intensity than it is at 80, 90 or 100%. Mm-hmm. And so similar, similar to, 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 lifting, I think that those are different skills. Like you, just because you're, 
your technique looks real nice on the bench press or on any exercise when you're warming up doesn't it, the, the it doesn't transfer at least in my experience as easily as you would like to when it's heavy and yeah. and so something that has helped me is to work on video which i do for social mm -hmm. media anyway but it's but it's helped me to review those videos and i'll see that i found that you know um uh, uh, there are little technique inefficiencies that i wasn't aware of because when i'm warming up it looks real nice and then i load it and if i'm deadlifting for example a uh, trap bar in particular my knees will tend to move inward a little bit is it a big right. deal no it's not enough to cause a problem but that's not optimal yeah. even squatting as well and i'm when i'm getting deeper into a, a set the weights are heavy i have to still consciously keep my knees in the right position or they'll bow a little bit inward and sometimes my hips will move a little bit too fast i would not see those things though uh, in my warm up sets. It's always the, the guy who wants to check his form and he's deadlifting 135. I'm like, well anybody can anybody can look pretty good deadlifting 135. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, and if that exactly. Yep. And that, that's when he's looking in the mirror or maybe even yeah. having his buddy check him out. Yeah, it looks real yeah. good. And then yeah. the buddy doesn't really say anything though when there's 315 on the bar mm. and he's starting mm -hmm. to go into the scaredy cat, you know. But he got the mm. reps, bro. Yeah, 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 which exactly. brings us back to the point. Did he, we did started he die? With. Yeah, mm -hmm. did he die? Yeah, right. <laughs> My hey, next all right. time. Right. Yeah, all right. So awesome, awesome conversation. Before we wrap up here, Mike. Aside from the new book, which again I'll link that in the uh, in the show notes over at chroniclesofstrength.com, dot uh, com, along with uh, some your your other books as well. Uh, where else can people keep up with you? Uh, your your website, your podcast. Just give us an idea of where people can enter the world of Mike Matthews, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if they if they dare. Uh, I think of uh, was it was it in Dante's Inferno, uh, Abandoned Hope. Uh, you enter here. Um, no, so so my so my podcast is called Muscle for Life, uh, which which it has always been called that. So the book came after, mm -hmm. and and that you can just find wherever you listen to podcasts, and uh, every everything else of mine lives over at Legion's website, which is my sports nutrition company, legionathletics.com. If you go to the blog, you're going to find uh, millions of words now and at least a couple million from me. And then I have a couple of other people who write with me and they write under their own names. But um, we, we have articles on, on I would say, most things that, that people – reach out to me about i have an article i can just link them to oh, that's a good question here Check it's, it's, it's handy isn't it uh -huh. yeah i mean it, it has it does it does come in handy just the it benefit also, it weeds out again people who who are mm -hmm. who are not serious at all who maybe mm -hmm. have a question but if they're not willing and these are not ten thousand word articles i've done right. that before but i do try to keep them i'm asking for 10 minutes of your time and it's going to give you a good answer to your question a practical answer and if 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 that if you if you're not willing to to do that then you're also not going to be willing to actually do what i would tell you to do mm -hmm. so um anyway so there are a lot of articles over there and I, I as you mentioned i have other books and those you can find anywhere you like to buy books and yeah fan Fantastic. Well, I'm going to link all of that in the show notes. Mike, Jim, it's been a blast, gentlemen. Thank you so much. It's great to talk to you, Mike. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Well, I hope you liked this episode. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, subscribe to the show because it makes sure that you don't miss new episodes. And it also helps me because it increases the rankings of the show a little bit, which of course then makes it a little bit more easily found by other people who may like it just as much as you. And if you didn't like something about this episode or about the show in general, or if you have uh, ideas or suggestions or just feedback to share, shoot me an email, mike at muscleforlife.com, muscleforlife.com, and let me know what I could do better or just uh, what your thoughts are about maybe what you'd like to see me do in the future. I read everything myself. I'm always looking for new ideas and constructive feedback. So thanks again for listening to this episode and I hope to hear from you soon.